Some of us in this world walk around a little bit more attuned to what's off kilter. And I've always been wired that way. I definitely feel very attuned to the subfrequencies of bad stuff that's happening. At face value, there's nothing funny about murder and death. My name is Abigail Goldman, and I make dioramas. at the Whatcom County Public Defender. We function as court-appointed attorneys for anyone in Whatcom County that's in trouble. I think that there is sort of a series of things that land someone in the crosshairs of the criminal justice system, but some standard bears are addiction, mental health, and poverty, or an overlap of all three. So sometimes we go back in time to sort of research our clients' backgrounds to see how those factors played a role in how they came to be in, in trouble with the law. My name is Joe Dozell, and I'm um, Abby's supervisor here at the Public Defender Office. In the Public Defender Office in general, I think we all sort of have a dark sense of humor. I mean, it's kind of how we deal with the content of, of the cases we're dealing with. We see horrible things in real life. Occasionally go over to the morgue or view autopsies being conducted, which is always kind of gnarly. <laughs> but mostly we get photos of crime scenes. I remember as a young child, I found a book of archival crime photographs from the 20s and 30s. And on one hand, they were, like any crime photos, really grisly and even more so because they're so clinical. That kind of photography always has sort of small details that tell a bigger picture. I remember just being fascinated by the minutia in the photos and what that meant, you know. Yes, there's, say, a body in the bathtub, but there's also, like, three toothbrushes by the sink. So what does that mean? My name is Amy Jones. I am a public defender attorney. I think I get a little desensitized in the line of work that I do whether that's gore or violence. So it was not off-putting. I actually was very entertained when I first saw her dioramas. Some of it is funny, has some humorous aspects to it. Some of it's very real life. In terms of the kiddo killing the babysitter or wife killing the husband and shoving him in the trunks, that's what we see. The one that I have in my office, I thought was appropriate for the juvenile court work I was doing just as, uh, you know, you gotta find some humor in what we're doing. My name is John Allgaier. I'm a detective with the Whatcom County Sheriff's Office here in Bellingham, Washington. Abby works with uh, 187th scale uh, miniatures. This is basically the same model, the same size as the real life one. It's a very large rifle. And then, <laughs> the little one. Uh, I've actually never held one before. That's much smaller than even I thought it was. Well, people want to know about her childhood. You know, what happened in her childhood that led her to this? And, you know, what kind of parents were we <laughs> that have spawned this you know, macabre uh, child? And uh, she had a very normal childhood, and I think we were pretty normal parents. She was really just a very sweet little girl with blonde curls and just so cute. When she was in college, she made a quilt and it had the San Quentin death row inmates photos on it. And she actually got a prison suit, like an orange prison suit, and used that fabric in the quilt. I mean, I always pursued various art and craft projects for my own interest, but never did I think they would be seen outside of my own living room. So back in 2012 is when my husband put a few pictures of dioramas on Reddit, just casually. I was kind of like, so I did something, and you might not be thrilled about this, but um, 
you're on the front page of Reddit right now. And there's like 15,000 comments and about half of them are pretty favorable and the other half are horrified. So that's a ratio I can work with. What noise does a duck make? Quack, quack. We live very normal, you know, suburban lives. But, you know, she makes little scenes of murder in the evenings when she gets home from work. We initially kind of crossed paths at a, a murder scene of all things. We were both working in journalism. I didn't approach her that day. I didn't feel it was like appropriate at that time. So we started dating shortly thereafter. I get asked frequently how long it takes to make a diorama and it's really hard to pinpoint. I don't work it just one at a time. It's all sort of like miniature landscaping and miniature concrete work and pouring plaster of Paris and letting that dry and pouring on grass and letting that dry. And the very final touch is always two or three brush strokes of red paint. And it's funny, the thing that makes the diorama is the blood and that is the quickest process. That's just a quick blood done. I really like having the dioramas be encased. Putting sort of a vitrine between the viewer and the work lends itself to a feeling of a contained violence. It's part of what I think makes it kind of amusing, is that it's almost this snapshot of a moment that's captured and bubbled and wrapped up. You know, I know very little about who has my work. Every once in a while, someone will send me a message and say they have a diorama. And I think there's almost a real feeling of like-mindedness because we're starting at the mutual shared interest in the macabre, <laughs> you know? So it's sort of like we skipped the first date. You can kind of fill in the story in your head. There are little murder scenes and mysteries, and I just fell in love and I've been hooked ever since. The most recent piece, it's called Tread Water. I call it the shark attack. Most often the reaction is a chuckle. I mean, she grows up in New York City, so she sees shit every day. It's not gonna be anything shocking. <laughs> Typically, people who aren't familiar with her work come at it because it's, they think it's a cute little scene, and then they take a deeper look. I've literally seen people kind of step back and, and be startled at what they're looking at. I think people, as a general matter, often have difficulty dealing with the sorts of subjects that she's portraying, so I guess one way that we react to that is to treat it as humorous rather than face the, what's really dark about it. One of the most satisfying parts about making dioramas is giving unsuspecting viewers a little jolt and a surprise. And that's, I think, what draws people to dioramas is that they look grotesque but familiar. They're horrifying but cute. They're grim but they're tiny. This was just a thought I had, taking my kid on a stroller walk down by the water in Bellingham so that I could just leave a diorama somewhere for someone to find. And that sort of incongruous shock between my scenic town that I live in and a tiny little flash of green and gore would just be a sort of fun thing to, to do to someone. It was just sort of upping the ante and my own personal thrill of scaring people a little bit or, you know, amusing people a little bit. Hopefully both of those things at once. <laughs> you can't go a day or two in this country without hearing about some new abomination and some new ghastly horror. It's almost become our number one cultural export, grotesque violence. It feels like there is just a fine, vibrating tension and anger under the surface. People like brushing up against their own mortality. And I think the only thing that makes being alive significant is that eventually we're all dead. And I think a diorama is a way of capturing and possessing and containing and confronting that reality.